Greetings, I'm Brian Posey, a longtime Tech Target contributor, and today I want to talk about storage provisioning from the command line. So why would you want to provision storage from the command line? Well, as you probably know, Windows Server 2008 allows you to install Windows in two different ways. You can either do a full installation, like what you see here, or you can do a server core installation, which is just a minimal Windows installation with no command prompt. Now, recently I've been spending a lot of time in Redmond learning all about Windows Server 8, the next version of Windows Server that's going to be coming out. And one of the things that Microsoft has said is that going forward, server core installations are going to become the norm and the preferred way of installing Windows. So that being the case, I want to begin kind of talking about some of the ways that you can manage Windows from the command line. And I want to start out by showing you how to provision storage. So before I get started, let me show you what I've got here. I've opened up the Disk Management Console, which you can get to by going to the Run Prompt and typing Disk Management.msc, and that brings up this console right here. Now here I have Disk 1, this is my main hard disk, I've got the System Reserve Partition, and then my boot drive right here, but I've got Disk 0, and this is a brand new hard disk that was just installed into the server, and you'll notice that it's a basic disk, and right now it's showing as being offline, and there's no partition, no space allocated, now normally if you wanted to bring this disk online, create a partition, format it, you could do this really easily through the GUI. You could right click here and choose online, that would bring the disk online. And then you could click on this empty space right here and you can see these options that are grayed out. We could create a new simple volume, a new span volume, all kinds of options here for creating different types of volumes. And then of course once a volume was created, we could do the same thing to format that new volume. But rather than going through the command pr or through the um, GUI, I want to show you how to accomplish the same set of tasks from the command prompt. So to prepare the storage for use, I'm going to open a command prompt window, and we'll open this and run it as an administrator. And I'm going to be using a utility called Diskpart. If this sounds familiar, it's because Diskpart has been around for a really long time and you can find it in some of the other Windows operating systems other than just Windows Server 2008. So let me go ahead and make this window a little bit bigger and the first thing that I'm going to do is take a look at the disks that are in the system and to do that I'm going to type list disk and here you can see both of the disks that are in the system disk 0 is offline that's the one that we're going to create a partition on and format it so that we can begin using it you can see that it's a 126 gig disk. We've got 126 gig free. So now that you've seen which disks are available, we have to select the disk that we want to work with. So you'll notice that each disk has a number. In this case, we're looking at disk zero. So I'm going to type select disk zero. And we get a message saying disk zero is now the selected disk. If we wanted to confirm this, we could do the list disk command again and you'll notice that now we've got an asterisk next to disk 0 showing that that is the selected disk. So since disk 0 is presently offline, the first thing that we're going to need to do is bring it online so that we can do other things to it. And we can do that very easily by just typing online disk. And you can see disk part successfully online to the selected disk. If I do the list disk command again, you can see that the disk is now online. So now that I've brought the disk online, I'm ready to create a partition. And I can do that by using the create partition primary command. But before I do that, I want to show you how disk parts help works. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the help command, and then I'm going to enter the command that I would normally use to create the partition, which is create partition primary and here's the help. We get the full syntax, but more importantly, we get a few examples of how we could create a partition. You can see we can specify a size, we can specify an ID, so there's all kinds of things that we can do here, but if you wanted to keep this simple, you don't really have to do any of this. We could just type create partition primary, and you'll notice that we got an error message here stating that the media is write protected. This error message is normal, and I actually wanted to trigger the error so that I could show you how to get around it. Because this is a brand new disk, Windows Write protects it for some reason. And the way that it does that is by adding a read-only attribute to the disk. So to make the disk non-read-only so that we can create our partition, all we have to do is get rid of that attribute. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type attributes disk and you can see here that the current read-only state is yes and the read-only attribute is set to yes. Now help works the same way it did when we were trying to create a partition earlier. So if I type help attributes disk you can see that the command to get rid of the attribute is attributes disk set or I'm sorry attributes disk clear read only so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now and we can see that the disk attribute was cleared successfully so if I enter the attributes this command again, you can see that this time the current read-only state is no, and this isn't a read-only disk anymore. So now that we've gotten rid of the read-only attribute, we can go ahead and create our partition. So to do that, I'm going to say create partition primary, and we can see the disk part succeeded in creating the specified partition. If I wanted to take a look at that partition, I can type detail partition. And here we have volume 3. We've got a raw file system and we've got a healthy 126 gig partition. Now as you'll recall earlier, when we first started out, we had to select the disk that we wanted to work with. Each disk in the system was assigned a number. Partitions work similarly. Each partition within a disk has a number assigned to it. In this case, we're dealing with partition 1. So we need to select that particular partition so that we can begin working with it. So I'm going to say select partition and we can see partition 1 is now the selected partition. So the next thing that I want to do is assign a drive letter to the partition that we created. And I'm going to use X in this case. So we can do this by just typing assign letter equals X. And we can see disk part successfully assigned the drive letter or mount point. So the last step in the process is to format the disk or format the partition that we've just created. Now if you've come from a DOS environment and have been doing this forever like I have, you might recall that the old DOS command is format X colon like that. But because we've already selected this partition, we don't have to specify a drive letter when we're going to format it. What we do need to specify is a file system. So to do that we're going to say format fs equals ntfs to use the ntfs file system. We can put a label on here if we want. And if we want to do a quick format, which I do, we can say quick. I hit enter and the format begins. So I momentarily pause the video while the format completed and you can see it's 100% complete. So I'm going to type exit to get out of disk part and we're back to the regular command prompt. I'm just going to go ahead and close this window and you see a message that had popped up from earlier because I left the disk management console open telling me I needed to format the disk in DriveX before it could be used. I can ignore this message because I just formatted it from the command line. But if you look back you can see we have new volume X. It's a healthy 127 gig NTFS primary partition and we did all of this from the command prompt without ever having to delve into the GUI. So that's how you can provision storage from the command line.